السلام علیکم ناظرین اردو نامہ کے اس بہت ہی اہم ایپیسوڈ میں آپ سب کا استقبال ہے آج ہماری مہمان ہیں امریکہ سے پروفیسر فرانسس ڈبلو پریچٹ ہم سبھی لوگ جانتے ہیں کہ فرانسس ڈبلو پریچٹ کا کارنامہ کتنا اہم اور وقی ہے ان کے کارنامے ایسے ہیں کہ اردو کے کسی بھی ناقد کو کسی بھی شارح کو یا کسی بھی ناقد کو ان پر رش ہو سکتا ہے ان کی کتابیں اتنی اہم اور اتنی امپورٹنٹ ہیں کہ ان میں ایک ایک کتاب ایسی ہے کہ اگر اس کا تجزیہ کیا جائے تو شاید ہمارے پاس وقت کم پڑ جائے گا خاص طور سے میڈم کا جو طریقۂ تحقیق ہے وہ ہم سب کے لیے واقعی قابل رش و داد ہے میڈم نے جو تحقیق کی ہے اور جتنی جا فشانی سے تحقیق کی ہے وہ اطنی اہم ہے کہ ہم سب کے لیے اس میں ایک طرح سے کہہ لیجیے کہ سبق ہے کہ تحقیق ہمیں کیسے کرنی چاہیے چاہے میڈم کا ویب سائٹ ہو یا ان کی مختلف کتابیں ہوں یا ان کے تراجم ہوں وہ سب اتنے اہم ہیں اور ان کے پیچھے اتنی محنت ہے کہ دیکھ کر میڈم کو رشک ہوتا ہے میڈم کا تعلق بنیادی طور پر امریکہ کی کولمبیا یونیورسٹی سے ہے جہاں پر یہ اردو زبان و ادب کی پروفیسر تھیں میڈم نے شکاگو یونیورسٹی سے ساؤتھ ایشین لینگویجز اینڈ سولائزیشن میں پی ایچ ڈی کی اور جب سے انہوں نے اپنی پوری زندگی ایسا لگتا ہے کہ صرف اسی ایک موضوع کے لیے وقف کر دیا ہے ان کے کام اتنے وقی ہیں اتنے اہم ہیں کہ ظاہر سی بات ہے کہ کوئی ادارہ ہی کوئی انسٹیٹیوشن سے اتنے اہم کام کر سکتا ہے ایک شخص ان کے کاموں کو دیکھ کر تو ایسا لگتا ہے کہ کوئی ایک شخص یہ کام نہیں کر سکتا ہے جب تک کہ اس کے پیسے پشت ایک بہت ہی ڈٹرمنیشنس نہ ہو ایک اسٹرانگ ول نہ ہو اور اس کو جس موضوع پر وہ کام کر رہا ہے اس کو اس سے دلچسپی اور بہت ہی زیادہ گہرا شکف اس سے نہ ہو میڈم کے کام ایسے ہیں کتابوں کی فہرست ایسی طویل ہے کہ ان کو گنانا یہاں بہت مشکل ہے ان کی چند کتابوں کا نام میں یہاں پہ اپنے طلباء کے لیے اپنے ناظرین کے لیے میں بتانا چاہتا ہوں تاکہ وہ ان کے کاموں کو اور ان کی کتابوں سے اندازہ لگا سکیں کہ میڈم نے کتنی محنت کی ان کتابوں کے لیے ایک اہم کتاب جو ہمارے سامنے ہے جو بالکل ابتدائی کتاب ہے شاید میڈم کے بہت ابتدائی زمانے کی وہ کتاب تھی وہ تھی دا اردو میٹر اے ہینڈ بک پر اس میں عروس کے اوپر جس میں بحث کی گئی ہے ظاہر سی بات ہے یہ ایسی بحث ہے کہ ہندوستان میں جو ماہرین عروس تھے وہ بھی یا خاص طور سے آج کر کے جو طلبہ ہیں اس سے بہت گھبراتے ہیں لیکن میڈم نے اپنے ابتدائی جو لرنرز تھے ان کے لیے اتنی اہم کتاب لکھ دی اور یہ میڈم ہی کی دلچسپی تھی کہ اتنے اہم موضوع پر اتنی پریکٹیکل بک لکھ لکھا انہوں نے اس کے بعد جو ہے مارولس انکاؤنٹر ہے دا رومانس ٹریڈیشنس ہیں اور اس کے علاوہ آب حیات شیپنگ دا کینن آف اردو پیٹری ہے غالب سلیکٹیڈ پوئمس اینڈ لیچرس ہے اور اس کے بعد داستانوں کے جو مختلف ترجمے میڈم نے کیے ہیں ان کے جو ان کے اوپر جو جو تنقیدی تاریخی مضامین لکھے ہیں جو اینولا فردو اسٹڈیز میں مستقل شائع ہوتے رہتے تھے شمس الرحمان فاروقی صاحب کی شراکت میں بھی انہوں نے بڑا کام کیا ہے اور شمس الرحمان فاروقی صاحب تو ان کے اتنے مہترف تھے ان کے اتنے مداح تھے اور یہ کہا کرتے تھے میڈم کہ اگر پریچڈ نے مجھے با اسرار داستان کی طرف متوجہ نہ کیا ہوتا تو شاید میں اتنا اہم کام نہ کر پاتا اور وہ بھی کہا کرتے تھے کہ یورپین مشقین نے چاہے وہ راف رسل ہوں یا ڈیوڈ میتھوز ہوں یا اور جو دوسرے مشرق ہوں ان ان کام ان کے سب کے کاموں میں اگر کسی کے کام کو وقت کی نظر سے دیکھا جا سکتا ہے اور کسی نے اگر تحقیقی تنقیدی اور تجزیاتی رویہ اپنایا ہے تو فرانسس ڈبلو پریچٹ ہیں ان کے کام بہت اہم ہیں ان کے کام بہت ہیں ہم ان پر ایک ایک بات کریں گے ایک ایک ان کے موضوعات جو ہیں مختلف نو موضوعات ہیں جیسے ابھی ابھی ہم بات کریں اس کی آب حیات کی بات کریں یا جو مختلف تراجم انہوں نے کیے ہیں نظیر اکبر آبادی کے شہر اشوب کا ترجمہ ہو جرت کے شہر اشوب کا ترجمہ ہو یا انتظار حسین کی بستی کا ترجمہ ہو یا ساقی فاروقی کی نظموں پہ جو میڈم آپ نے وہ لکھا تھا مقدمہ وہ کتنا گرا قدر مقدمہ ہے یا آپ کی جو ویب سائٹ ہے اس پر تو خیر میں بعد میں آؤں گا اس پر الگ سے بات ہوگی کہ وہ کتنا اہم ہے اور وہ کتنا بڑا ذخیرہ ہے ہمارے لیے میڈم سب سے پہلے تو آپ سے یہ جاننا چاہیں گے کہ آپ کی تو بنیادی دلچسپی ساؤتھ ایشین لینگویجز میں تھی اس کی تہذیب پر تھی پھر وہ کیا چیزیں ہوئیں کہ آپ اردو کی طرف مائل ہو گئیں اور وہ کون سے عوامل تھے میڈم جنہوں نے آپ کو اردو کی طرف متوجہ کر دیا اور ہمارے سامنے اتنا وقی اتنا اہم کام آپ نے کر کے دکھا دیا پہلی بات یہ ہے کہ آپ لوگ برا نہ مانیں جو میں زیادہ تر انگریزی میں 
बात करूं इसलिए कि मेरी मादरी जबान है जिस तरह के आप लोगों को उर्दू आती है और आसानी में अपना पूरा मतलब उर्दू में समझा सकते हैं आसानी से तो मेरे लिए इस तरह के कमेंट अंग्रेजी पर है और इस तरह की आसानी अंग्रेजी में बात करने में है तो आप लोग बुरा न माने जो मैं अंग्रेजी में बात करूं नो इशू मैडम प्लीज स्पीक इन व्हाट यू वांट आई स्टार्टेड आउट एज अ हिंदी वाली और रादर आई स्टार्टेड आउट एज अ एज अ a traveler a safar karne wali i had a, a strange fellowship that let me travel and i chose to go to india and i chose right after college and i chose to of course start to learn hindi uh, before going to india and i found it so easy and charming and such a sweet language that i pursued it vigorously and i had a very good time in india and i then went to graduate school at berkeley and i started of course in america and in in north america generally in canada too most of the time hindi and urdu are taught somewhat together um if you are learning hindi you're also taught the urdu script and vice versa if you are learning urdu you are also taught devanagari and we think that's a common sense approach but i know it's not often followed in india and pakistan but anyway as a hindi student at berkeley i was taught um urdu script by a gentleman called moazam siddiqui um who's a, a, had a, gone on to have a notable career yes. in working for voice of america and also organizing urdu functions in the washington dc area it's an interesting story he came to berkeley to study entomology that is insects and while he was at berkeley he had a sort of flash of inspiration and he realized that he should study persian and urdu instead so he became the teaching assistant who was teaching urdu script to our class and he taught us the alphabet the we could barely read we had no idea what an isafat was and he made us read a share of ghalib and then he played us begum akhtar singing that share and that was just it i said okay this is how poetry should be and i set out to have more <clears throat> so that was the beginning of yes. my encounter with urdu and of course in the beginning i pursued both hindi and urdu vigorously and i still do i have a great soft spot in my heart for devanagari script and for hindi literature as well as urdu but ghalib has became part of the center of my consciousness as well as my academic work from that point on ma'am jaisa ki abhi aapne ghalib ka naam liya to ghalib ka naam aate hi हम लोगों का जहन आपकी उस वेबसाइट की तरफ चला जाता है जो आप मेंटेन कर रही हैं और जाहिर सी बात है वो एक कंटिन्यूस प्रोजेक्ट है जो आप करती रहती हैं मैडम उसके अशार जो आपने मंतखब किए गालिब के फिर एक एक शेर का कहाँ उसके जो मुख्तलिफ अल्फाज हैं उन अशार के मुख्तलिफ अल्फाज में क्या रियायत रियायत लफ्जी है कौन सा अल्फाज गालिब ने कहाँ यूज़ किया या दूसरे शोरा ने कहाँ यूज़ किया और उन किन किन मानों में यूज़ किया अगर मजनू का लफ्ज है तो कहाँ है किन मानों में है या मुख्तलिफ लफ्ज जो जितनी भी लफ्जियात हैं पूरी डिटेल आपने वो जो ए डेजर्ट फुल ऑफ रोजेस जो है जो आपका वेबसाइट का जो अहम हिस्सा है उस पर जो गालिब के जो कलाम का आपने तर्जुमा किया है मैडम या इसी तरह मीर के ऊपर जो अपना वेबसाइट मेनटेन कर रही हैं ए गार्डन ऑफ कश्मीर इन दोनों को मैडम क्या वजह थी क्यों दिलचस्पी हुई आपको कि इनका एक वेबसाइट मेनटेन किया जाए और वो भी इस तरह से अंग्रेजी में तर्जुमा करके किया जाए जाहिर सी बात है जो उसमें जो रिसर्च शामिल है वो तो एक आम आदमी के बस की बात नहीं मैडम तो आप कैसे कर ले जाती हैं उसको इतना वजह क्या है या क्या सिर्फ गालिब की दिलचस्पी थी या गालिब के बारे में जो लोग मुख्तलि पहले जानते थे जो रवायती नजरियात थे कि कोई मुश्किल पसंद कह रहा है कोई मजा मतलब उनके तंज व मजाक के बारे में कह रहा है कोई ये कह रहा है कि उनका इस्तेफामिया अंदाज हमें बड़ा अपील करता है तो कौन सी चीज़ें थी मैडम गालिब के बारे में जिसने आपको आमादा किया कि इतना बड़ा काम आप अंजाम दे सकें और वो मुस्तकिल अभी तक आप कर रही हैं उसको तो हमें मैडम उस वेबसाइट के बारे में और गालिब से जो आपने तर्जुमा किया उसके बारे में तो खैर मैं बाद में आऊँगा ये बताएं कि वो वेबसाइट की क्या अहमियत है 
ایک عام قاری کے لیے ایک عام ناخد یا ایک شارے کے غالب کے شارے کے لیے well, I found, I simply knew that this was great poetry and also I discovered over time that it was basically untranslatable and so I wanted to share it with my students I wanted to share it with everybody in the world especially after September 11th um, because my students my South Asian students of, of Urdu at Columbia were suffering so much after September 11th because they were New Yorkers and so they felt the way we all did, but they were also perceived as Muslims, as, as Pakistanis, as, as, you know, they were given cold looks on the subway and they were treated hostily by people in the aftermath of that. And I just wanted to do anything I could to smooth the path to intercultural understanding. And so I started out with on a very small scale with this website to share this great poetry. And it was so exciting and delightful to me to do it that it never occurred to me not to do it. People told me, oh, don't put your work up there. People will steal it. People will plagiarize it. And I mm -hmm. decided I didn't care uh, because if they did and they found it useful, well, that would spread it around wider. And I don't care who gets credit for it. Um, I, want, I want people to think about Ghalib and have many resources. That's the thing I put on the website is every possible resource I could think of, both for a serious scholar and for a beginner. And I'm always a teacher and a student myself. So I'm always thinking, what could confuse a student about this verse? So I put in grammar notes as well as, as complicated approaches to the poetry and I always try to start with what the commentators say but then I usually try to go beyond it because for various reasons the commentators on Ghalib have not done a, a deep job what I would call a deep job yeah that is a great job man uh, you have done ma'am uh, the same way madam aapne jab Meer Taqi Meer ka bhi translation kiya unke tarajim ki jab ki hamare haan Meer ki sharab ke tor par شمس الرحمان فاروقی صاحب کی کتاب موجود تھی لیکن آپ کی جو ہم وہ دیکھتے ہیں ویب سائٹ کو تو اس میں بعض اشعار تو جیسے چھ جو میر کے دیوان ہیں ان دیوان کے مختلف غزلوں کو آپ نے منتخب کیا اور پھر ان کی پوری تشریح ہمارے سامنے رکھی تو یہ کس طرح مختلف ہے پرانے کاموں سے یا جو دوسرے کام ہوئے ہیں غالب کے شرح کے حوالے سے یا میر کے شرح کے حوالے سے تو ان دونوں ویب سائٹس میں یا جو کتابیں ہمارے یہاں موجود ہیں اس میں کچھ کامن چیزیں ہیں ظاہر سی بات ہے کامن تو بہت ساری چیزیں ہیں لیکن کیا کچھ کسی کام کا اس میں ایکسٹینشن بھی نظر آتا ہے ہم سب کہ ایک عام قاری کے لیے اس میں کچھ ایسا ہے ظاہر سی بات ہے آپ کا ویب سائٹ انگریزی دان طبقہ کے لیے ہے نو ڈاؤٹ اس میں لیکن کیا میڈم کچھ اس میں ڈپارٹ بھی کرتے ہیں کچھ الگ بھی یا آگے بھی جاتے ہیں ہم سے کہ جو شرح مارکیٹ میں دستیاب ہیں خاص طور سے میر غالب کے حوالے سے تو جو آپ نے جیسا کہ کوٹ کیا کہ پہلے آپ نے شعر نقل کیا اس کا انگریزی میں ترجمہ کیا پھر اس کے جو مشکل الفاظ تھے ان کے معنی لکھے پھر بے خود موہانی کیا کہہ رہے ہیں حسد موہانی کیا کہہ رہے ہیں نظم تبا تباہی کیا کہہ رہے ہیں پھر آپ کی جو کمنٹری تھی اس پہ اور خاص طور سے وہ جو آپ نے مطلب جو شعری جو ڈیوائس جس کو ہم کہتے ہیں پوئٹک ڈیوائس ان کے اعتبار سے جو آپ نے اس کا جو اس کا انٹرپریٹیشن کیا وہ بڑا مارویلس ہے تو یہ میڈم کہاں یہ ہمیں دوسرے جو شارحین ہیں ان سے الگ نظر آتا ہے آپ کا یہ کام Well, the, the fascinating thing and the depressing thing is what a stepchild Mir has been for the commentarial tradition. For Ghalib, there's over a hundred commentators. There's over a hundred complete commentaries on his whole, every, every verse, 1,459 or so of his published Thivan. And so there's a huge commentarial tradition. And for almost nobody else in the whole Urdu literary world, is there any commentarial tradition at all? And for Mir, the only commentary that I'm aware of is, of course, the one that is the, the bunyad of, of, of my own website, namely Shamsur Rahman's commentary, and, which is called Shere Shorang Gaze. Um, tumult creating poetry yeah, yeah. and I have used his commentary as the basis for 
for um, my own intikhab and shara of mir, because also the other one reason is that there is no commentarial tradition for mir is abe hayat and yeah. the false impression about mir that's given to us by azad. And another reason is, of course, that Ghalib has 234 ghazals in his divan, and Mir has almost 2,000 It's in yes. his divan. It's yes. 1,900 and, and some number of, of ghazals. And yes. so there are intikhabs, and the people who would have done a shara of Ghalib, if they're Mir lovers, they did an intikhab instead, and just a collection of their favorite verses. So a lot of people have read Mir only in the form of intikhabs. And that, of course, means you're hostage to the taste of the person who is doing the the intikhab. And so um, I was very happy to have my own ustad, Shamsur Rahman, do his in intikhab and an extensive shara. Anybody who uses the Mir website will notice that whereas the Ghalib website uses bits and pieces of lots of different commentators because they're there and they're relevant, the Mir website uses basically only Shamsur Rahman and of course me. I get to say a few words after translating and and analyzing mm. his his work, but without his work, I could never have done the the yeah. mere shara at all. And mm -hmm. it's been it's been fascinating to me. And he himself, Shamsur Rahman, started out as a Ghalibian. And the mm -hmm. whole first part of his career, he was working on Tafhim e Ghalib and mm -hmm. discussions of verses of Ghalib. And at a certain point, I still remember, he called me on the phone and he said in a hushed voice, um, mm -hmm. I'm afraid that I think Mir is a greater poet than Ghalib. And I said, yeah. oh, my God, <laughs> I was shocked. I was shocked. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. later he also said, well, maybe they're equally great poets, but Mir yeah. has a wider range, which is yeah, certainly yeah. true. So yeah, yeah. I remain a Galibian at heart, but I'm also, thanks to Shamsur Rahman, uh, I'm learning to greatly admire and appreciate Mir. And yeah. the two are each other's best interlocutors. They, yes, are, yes. they are each other's best companions because the human mind works through comparison and yes. contrast. And so yes. to have one thing is much less valuable than to have two things of the same kind that you can compare and contrast and say, well, they have this in common and that in that difference. And so yes. to have Mir and Ghalib to juxtapose to each other is priceless. And I'm really yes. proud of having been able to live long enough and, <laughs> and work hard enough with great joy to yes. have got through the four volumes of Shere Shorangez and yes. correlate them and put them up on the website. Um, and yes because I, I think that's a, a great contribution to bring Shamsur Rahman's invaluable work to a wider audience. And of course, Mir's invaluable work too, to try to undo some of the damage that Azad did to his reputation in Abe Hayat. Yes, yes. Oh, man. Because of this man, you have your website dedicated to Shamsur Rahman Farooqi Sahibi. Now, the part of this Mir was a garden of Kashmir wala, wo pura aapne dedicate kiya Shamsur Rahman Farooqi sahab ko. Madam, ek sawaal jo main aapse janna chah raha tha, ki madam, jitne Urdu ke stall ward the, ya kah lijiye ki Urdu ki jo history hai, ki jo turning points thi, wo sab ko aapne pick up kiya. Pahle daastan mein liya, to jo sabse jo zakhim daastan thi, aapne uska tarjuma kiya, uske upar tanqidi mazamin likhe. Isi tarah jab shayar mein aaye, to aapne Ghalib aur Mir ko muntakhab kiya. नावेल में आप आए तो आपने इंतजार हुसैन का इंतखाब किया या जो नए शोरा में साकी फारूकी के ऊपर आपने काम किया तो मैम ये जानना चाह रहा था मैं कि जैसे आपने मीर और गालिब को आपसे बड़ी आपको बड़ी दिलचस्पी थी मीर और गालिब से तो वो क्या वजह हुई कि दास्तान जैसी एक मतलब हमारे यहां हिंदुस्तान में बहुत कम लोग उसको शुरू शुरू में पढ़ते थे ये आपका खास से शमशुर रहमान फारूकी साहब का कारनामा है कि लोगों ने दास्तान की अहमियत को समझना शुरू किया अदरवाइज यहां के तारीख में अगर आप देखेंगे क्या नाकिदीन के यहां बतौर खास 
داستان کو بہت زیادہ اہمیت نہیں دی جاتی تھی یا اس کو وہ ادبی مرتبہ نہیں دیا گیا تھا جس کا وہ مستحق تھا لیکن آپ کو میڈم کیا مطلب کون سے عوامل تھے کہ آپ نے شروع کیا وہ بھی اتنے بڑے پروجیکٹ سے بھائی ظاہر سی بات ہے داستان امیر حمزہ بیالیس ہزار صفحات ہیں اور فاروقی صاحب کا یہ دعویٰ تھا کہ یہ بیالیس ہزار صفحات یا تو میرے پاس ہیں یا تو فرانسس پریچٹ کے پاس ہیں تو اتنی محبت میڈم داستان سے آپ کو کیوں کر ہو گئی As, as I told you, from the very start of my graduate career, I loved Ghalib, but I also recognized that I didn't know enough Urdu to work on Ghalib. I just didn't. And uh, my, my wonderful Ustad, C.M. Naeem, at the University of Chicago, whom I greatly admire and appreciate, the, the one flaw I ever found in his teaching was that he never taught anybody meter. And he would say, oh, it's so complicated. Um, I, all the rule books are in Persian and Arabic. I don't know how to explain it. Just listen to me read and you'll pick it up. And it's 90% of it is you can pick up through hearing somebody read, but never 100%. You will always run into things that you can't explain and things that trip you up. So I knew that I couldn't work on Ghalib until I, I knew more Urdu and Urdu meter. And so I had to do a dissertation, you know, to get my PhD because I was just a graduate student and I needed a career. And so <laughs> I decided to work on the genre called Qissa, um, mm -hmm. you know, because it was a it was a popular printed genre in both Urdu and Hindi, you know, Qissa yeah. in Hindi. And yeah. a lot of the wonderful texts in it were stories that would go back and forth, like Hatim Tai and... Um, you know, Tota Mena, they were mm -hmm. published in both scripts with mm -hmm. some vocabulary change and sometimes not. And it very much fascinated me because they were everywhere. Um, they were, you could find them in every bazaar in North India and in Pakistan and down to Bombay. And they were much more widely known by ordinary people than fancy writers like Premchand and company were. And yet no one had ever looked at them or studied them. So I decided to do this because I, it would give me a chance to use Hindi and Urdu both because I enjoyed them both. So mm -hmm. I started with, with um, the Kristas. And as I would go into old, old um, bookstores in, in Delhi, in Urdu Bazaar and in the lanes behind the Jama Masjid, I would find every so often they when when the proprietors realized that i really wanted old things because most of their customers wanted new things so they would take me into a back room and there i would find a pile of old faded little comic book size pissas and i i would often find a huge black volume of many hundreds of pages bound in black, just sitting among these little little kissas. And it always reminded me of a beached whale among the minnows. And it looked so strange. And when I would pick one up and open it, it would say, oh, I, I am the, the something volume of the something daftar of the dastan of Amir Hamza. And it was, it was this huge volume was proclaiming that it was a subset of the subset of this other mm -hmm. process. And so I started buying them for five rupees or 10 rupees because nobody wanted them in those days. Mm -hmm. And I got fascinated by them. And so I worked on for my, the book that I wrote was based on the most popular one volume version of, of the cycle because again I had to I had to have an academic career. I couldn't read 46 <laughs> volumes. But I yeah. was able, mashallah, to get Shamsur Rahman interested because he could read 46 mm -hmm. volumes and did and mm -hmm. has written a brilliant series of of um, works on on the whole cycle. And yeah. so that was a, a great pleasure. And I started collecting them and through a lot of vicissitudes that are we don't have time to go into, they're now, mashallah, basically the whole cycle is available online thanks to reikta.org and Columbia University and Shamsur Rahman and me. 
And so I'm proud of that because scholars of the future and readers of the future will have the chance to go back and see them if they want to. And we can hope that they do. But if, if our generation hadn't preserved them, these are old, old paper and cheap binding. And, you know, we, we really needed to get them online and well preserved digitally and that's happening so i'm i i have not read the 46 volume version but mm. i'm i'm very pleased to have had any role in preserving it because it's a wonderful feat of storytelling and if we in if in english shamsur rahman and i used to lament about this if in english there were a magnificent epic like this that was so huge and so rich with imagination and vocabulary and poetry and storytelling and so mm -hmm. fascinating to so many people if we had that in english scholars would be all over it and Netflix would make special a special series <laughs> about it, and everybody would be proud of it and recognize it. But we have it in Urdu, and we've only recently stopped being ashamed of it. May, yes. People have always told me, oh, my parents didn't permit me to read that sort of thing. I used to read them in in uh, in bed with a flashlight under the covers because the Dastan of Amir Hamza was considered either vulgar or childish or wrong you know there was too much imagination in it too much wine drinking too much love making too much unrealism it didn't suit the victorian british taste it was sidelined by the critical tradition in urdu until mm -hmm. very recently and even now it hasn't fully recovered although musharraf faruqi in pakistan is doing something toward yeah. that end and yeah. the of course we have the dasan goi revival mm -hmm. after a fashion in india which is thanks to shamsur rahman's and his his nephew and various people. So that's going oh, on. But I, my share of it is preserving the text. So I'm yes, happy to have been working yes. on that. Yes, yes, it was great job done by you, ma'am. Great, great, great work you have done in this field also, like others one. Okay, ma'am. Just, just like Madam, I have said that the whole work is in English in English. और आपने इन सारी चीजों का चाहे वो आबे हयात हो चाहे दास्तान अमीर हमजा हो या जो दूसरी दास्तानें हों या गालिब और मीर जैसा कि अभी हम लोग जिक्र कर रहे थे वो सारी चीजें हैं तो जाहिर सी बात है दास्तान का ترجمہ یا غالب جیسے مشکل پسند شاعر کا ترجمہ یا میر کے بارے میں جن کے بارے میں کہا جاتا ہے کہ بہت ساری بظاہر ان کی جو خیال بندی ہے وہ اتنے آسان نظر آتے ہیں کہ لیکن کو سمجھنا بڑا مشکل ہوتا ہے تو ان سب کو ایک مطلب शेर के उसमें सांचे में ढालना या मंशाए मुसन्निफ को अंग्रेजी में मुंतकिल करना वो मैडम जाहिर सी बात है इतना आसान काम तो नहीं था फिर आपने कैसे इसको ترجمہ کیا کہ آپ کے ترجمے اتنے پاپولر ہو گئے اب ظاہر سی بات ہے ہم غالب کا جیسے اپ کوئی شعر لے کے ذریعہ اگر چاہیں تو ہمیں بتائیں کہ غالب کا کوئی شعر تھا اپ نے اس کو کیسے سمجھا اور وہ جو عام شارحین سے ان سے وہ کیوں کر مختلف تھا پھر اپ نے اس کو کیسے ترجمہ کیا میڈم उस हवाले से या अपने पसंद का कोई शेर जो आपको غالب का हो जिसने आपको बहुत परेशान किया हो ترجمہ کرتے وقت اس کے بارے میں کچھ بتائیں یعنی ترجمہ کے حوالے سے اپنے تجربات ہیں اشعار کے اس کو کچھ شیئر کریں میں ہم لوگوں سے ام سو یو یو ویسٹ ا ویری کمپلیکیٹڈ سیریز اف کوسچنز ام ات ات نیور اکرڈ ٹو می ناٹ ٹو ٹرانسلیٹ ام in, in a sense, because I needed to translate for my own self. And yes. also, I always knew how to talk to English speaking students, whereas yes. I didn't know how to talk to Urdu speaking students, because my, my whole teaching experience and study experience was basically in this country, mm -hmm. although I had, mm -hmm. uh, although I had many South Asian teachers and, and collaborators. Mm -hmm. So I always saw myself as a teacher in that respect. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and now, would you would you like me to just tell you any share that I like from Ghalib? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, any, we were... any, any, any share, man. Any share, whatever you want. After your choice. How much? How much time do we have left? Because I I want to, uh, you know, cut my coat according to the cloth. Oh, just we have, ma'am, ten minutes more. Okay. Just we will ask about one question more about the mirror. 
and we'll next time we will conclude. Okay. Um, then I think I'd like to say something. I bet everybody, everybody who is listening knows yes. Fez. Yeah, and yeah, knows Muj se pehli si mohabbat meri mehboob nama. And I, you know how he begins. Mene samjha ta ki tu hai to daraksha hai hayat. Tera gham hai to gham e dehar ka chagra kya hai. And then he goes, can, he goes and develops it. Yo na ta, mene fakat chaha ta, yo ho jaye. Or bhi dukh hai zamane mein muhabbat ke siwa. Rahatein or bhi hai vasil ki rahat ke siwa. Mujh se pehli si muhabbat meri mehboob namang. And then he goes into the the bestial talism and all that. Um, but since the time is short, I would like to say that I that's usually read as a criticism of the classical guzzle and it as a as a sort of signpost of departure from the classical guzzle and i i do agree that it probably is that although it doesn't have to be because the mujh se pehli si muhabbat could mean the way i used to love you beloved and not the way Ghalib used to write about poetry if you know what I mean it's not explicitly about the classical guzzle tradition but implicitly it is so when I when I read Ghalib and Mir subconsciously I was always looking for signs of social consciousness oh what what verses can there be that would refute this idea that I would love to see some some verses that that could demonstrate that the classical guzzle does care about other other things beyond just the the lovers trials and tribulations so let me say i actually have more things to say but we won't have time um so let me say one verse that i don't want to talk about of galibs and then another verse that i do want to talk about teri vafa se teri vafa se Kya ho talafi ke dahar me? Teri vafa se kya ho talafi ke dahar me? Tere se vabhi hum pe bahot se sitam hue. Kya baat hai mein? Kya Now there's half the battle, right? Um, yes. Even if you are faithful to me, beloved, um, then so what? It's not a sufficient recompense because mm -hmm. I've suffered a lot more in the world besides <laughs> the sufferings of love. Now, that's an unusual theme because the lover usually emphasizes the sufferings of passion and ish beyond everything. But there is that one verse. It's 167,5 if you want to look it up on my website. But much more to the point, a wonderful verse of Ghalib's that is very little known, and it's also very un-Ghalibian. It's in the very famous guzzle called Ibn Maryam Hua Kare Koi, that one. But it's not the most famous verse. Kaun hai jo nahi hai hajat mand? Kaun hai jo nahi hai hajat mand? Kis ki hajat rava kare koi? Kiski hajat rava kare koi. So there's the there's what I think of as the sensibility of the classical guzzle. It's not about getting jobs for people or finding improved living conditions or providing social benefits for people. It's on a more cosmic or philosophical or mystical level, if you prefer, um, that we are all in need and we cannot fulfill each other's needs. Who can fulfill anyone's real needs? And so the, I think of the classical Ghazal and Ghalib and Mir as being not about real life or social life, but about the inner lives that everybody has that are so different from their outer lives. I mean, so many people, many of us perhaps have very respectable outer lives and we live in a middle-class way. And yet inside we may be boiling with private emotions of a very different kind. And that's what the classical guzzle speaks to in my mind. And that's what it's about. 
And mm -hmm. that's why it cannot resemble or compete with uh, mm -hmm. the progressives poetry or, or Fez's poetry. But of yes. course, Fez was a notable Galibian. And yes. we, it's very clear from the titles he chose for his own collections that he too appreciated Ghalib. And there is yes. one verse by Mir that could go along the same lines. This, this is a, a hard one. It's very un to, in, in, at least to me. Kar khaf kalak khasp ki jo surk hai anke. Kar khaf kalak khasp ki. Jo surk hai anke, jalte hai taro khushk pi miski ke ki miski ke gazab me. Jalte hai taro khushk pi miski ke gazab me. So oh, words, that, that has a William Blake flavor to it, doesn't it? Yes. That yes. that a fear you should fear the pauper. I don't know if you folks know the words kalak khusp. It literally yeah, yeah. Hi, one who hires, who, who huddles around a fire to keep yes, warm yes. at night. And, yes, and yes. therefore, it means a very poor person or a wretched person. I only mention it because perhaps you all know the word, but I didn't know it until I read the <laughs> mirror and looked it up. But um, that person will have red eyes from fatigue or from the glow of the fire. And so the red eyes will suggest burning. And so the second Misra says that wet and dry, everything will burn with the anger or wrath of the humble and poor people. So in other words, it's it's got to it's got a very progressive flavor to it. It's it's <laughs> what, like an ominous warning. Watch out, you rich people, the poor people who is huddled around the fire with red eyes of fatigue and suffering. Their red eyes equate with fire and the, the Lord will see that they are the power of their wrath will will blight your lives. And so that's a very atypical verse, I have to say. I'm a guy who wrote who wrote 1900 and some guzzles. That's mm. the main verse like that that I found. So mm. I don't claim that that's a dominant theme or anything like a major theme in the classical guzzle mm. world. But it's very interesting to me to look at the classical guzzle and as opposed to the progressives uh, who are much more approachable and much more popular and Fez as a sort of mediating figure. It's very interesting. So mm. I don't mean to go on and on, but that was just something I thought to mention. Okay. Great, ma'am. Great. Bahut acha discussion hua, madam. हम लोगों को आपकी बातें सुनके जो हम लोगों ने पढ़ा था आपके बारे में वो आपको सुनकर मजीद उसकी जो है वैलिडेशन हो गया कि आपके तजुर्बात कितने वसी हैं और कितनी आपकी मालूमात कितनी गहरी है जिस तरह आपने गालिब के अशार की या मीर के अशार की जो उनके नुआंसेस थे उनकी जो डिटेल्स माइनूट डिटेल्स जो थे आपने जो बताया है वो हम सब के लिए बहुत ही अहम है मैम उम्मीद करते हैं मैम कि हम मुस्तबिल में भी आपसे इसी तरह बात करते रहेंगे और आप हमें अपनी मसरूफ जिंदगी से थोड़ा सा वक्त निकाल कर देंगी हम हिंदुस्तानी तलबा को भी उर्दू अदब के कि हम लोग आपसे कुछ उर्दू जबान और अदब के बारे में ख़ास तौर से आपका जो तहकीक का जो रवैया है जो अप्रोच है जिस तरह आपने वेबसाइट को अपडेट कर रखा है मैडम किसी भी आदमी के लिए जो उर्दू जबान और अदब से या किसी भी इल्म से दिलचस्पी रखता हो उसके लिए बहुत अहम है कि काम कैसे करना चाहिए तहकीक क्या होती है शरह कैसे लिखी जाती है या जो मुख्तलिफ़ शरह हैं उनके दौरान अपनी बात कैसे रखी जा सकती है इन सब बातों से हमारे सामने जो आपकी शख्सियत जो है वो पूरे तौर से आया हो जाती है और हम एक बार फिर मैडम आपके इंतहाई दिल से शुक्रगुजार हैं मशकूर हैं कि आपने अपनी ज़िंदगी के बहुत ही हमारे लिए बहुत ही कीमती वक्त है वो और आपके लिए जाहिर सी बातें आप इतनी मसरूफ़ रहती हैं मेरे इसरार करने पर आपने इतनी मोहब्बत से हमें अपना वक्त दिया हम इसके लिए आपके शुक्रगुजार हैं और मैम उम्मीद करते हैं कि कभी नियर फ्यूचर में हम चाहेंगे कि एक सेशन सिर्फ आपसे जो है सिर्फ गालिब के बारे में हम बात करें सिर्फ मीर के बाद में बारे में बात करें हम आप अशार पढ़ें मीर के और आपसे उसकी शरह समझें कि आप इसको क्या समझ रही हैं क्या बताएँ हमें उसको ताकि हम भी उसको एक नए जाविए से मीर को देख सकें गालिब को देख सकें 
और जो एक पूरी हमारी रवायत रही है तरक्की पसंद मुसनफीन तक के या बाद में जदीद शुरा की तरफ आपने तो पूरा जैसे फारूकी साहब भी कहते थे कि अदब एक जमानी होता है अदब का कोई पीरियड नहीं होता है और जो बीच में खला कर देता है वो अदब को या उसकी रवायत को पूरे तौर पर बरत नहीं सकता है वो समझ नहीं सकता है बहरहाल मैम मैं हम आपके बहुत ही शुक्रगुजार हैं कि आपने वक्त निकाला और हमसे बात की बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया मैम बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया थैंक्स ए लॉड फॉर शेयरिंग द टाइम विद अस थैंक यू इसी के साथ प्रोग्राम को अख्ताम किया जाता है उम्मीद कि हम अगले एपिसोड में एक नए मेहमान के साथ आपसे मिलेंगे बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया